December marks each coming year. No, I'm not talking Christmas cheer. The festival of lights has come, and this year we will still have fun. Let the oil burn, let it shine on bright. Cause we're doing this for eight whole nights. Pass the gelt, break the mandel bread. The sun has set. It's 6 p.m., the match is out. Menorah set. I wonder all the gifts I'll get as family sings. And laughs ensue as Hanukkah goes live on Zoom. Sour cream and applesauce for latkes, no doubt. Computer charger to make sure we don't get kicked out. 44 candles set for each of the nights And all our little faces if we set it up right We can go to temple when we pray to Adonai Put it on the TV with the HDMI Grandma, you and Grandpa can't be in the same room Unless you're both on mute Let the oil burn, let it shine on bright Cause we're doing this for eight whole nights Pass the gout, break the mandel bread The sun has set at 6 p.m. The match is out, menorah set I wonder all the gifts I'll get as family sings and laughs ensue as Hanukkah goes live on Zoom. Me when the sun goes down, let the blessing start. Zoom. Pass your phone around, do your part, we'll be smart. Let the oil burn, let it shine on bright, cause we're doing this for eight whole nights. Pass the gelt, break the mandel bread. The sun has set at 6 p.m. The match is out, menorah is set. I wonder all the gifts I'll get as family sings and laughs ensue as Hanukkah. Wear your yarmulke because Hanukkah goes live on Zoom. So what are the miracles we're talking about on Hanukkah? There are two miracles we think of on Hanukkah. One is the victory of the Maccabees, this tiny, tiny army beating the empire's army. And then we think about once they've beat the army, they go back into the temple and they find just enough oil to last for one night and they light the oil and it lasts for eight nights. What can we learn from these two miracles we think about on Hanukkah? We learn that Miracles are not only something that come from God, but they're something that we can help spark. We spark the miracles in our lives. The army had to fight. The people in the army were the ones who were fighting. They were active players in their miracle. And when it came to the oil, they didn't walk into the temple and just see a little bit of oil and just say, okay, I'm waiting for it to light. 
They took that oil and they lit the oil. This Hanukkah, I want all of us to feel inspired and think about what are the miracles that we can help start in our own lives? How can we partner with God to bring the miraculous into our world today? Hanukkah Sameach. Becca Tobin? Tamika Stanwitz, Camp Ramon the Berkshires. Yes, you're 93. Yes, you were Yom Sport General. No. I'm oh, sorry, you were Yom Sport Captain. No. They were saving you for general, but they never made you captain, so you had no leadership position whatsoever on Yom Sport. That's it, that's the one. Ugh. How excited are you for Hanukkah? Hanukkah? <laughs> it's early November, isn't Hanukkah the winter one? Well, we're shooting this in early November, so just go with it. Okay. Wait, hang on. Which one is Hanukkah again? Is Hanukkah the one where we dance around and we're really simcha about the Torah? That's simcha Torah. Is Hanukkah the one where we fast all day? That's Yom Kippur. No, no, no. The other one. The one that takes place in the summer on Tisha B'Av. That's Tisha B'Av. Is Hanukkah the one where the same day keeps happening over and over again and it stars Bill Murray? That's Groundhog Day. Is Hanukkah the one that's a little bit like Halloween except fewer zombies and more apricot filling? Purim. Is Hanukkah the one where we're inscribed in the Book of Life, but we're not sealed yet, so you still have 10 days to mess the whole thing up? That's Rosh Hashanah. Is Hanukkah the one where we build huts and we march around with plants and lemons? That's Sukkot. Is Hanukkah the one where you're both really hungry and disgustingly full for an entire week straight? Definitely Passover. Is Hanukkah the one that's really hard to explain to non-Jews? That's pretty much all of them. No, 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 what about the one that's even harder to explain to Jews who are not observant? Last days of Passover. Wait, is Hanukkah the one that's a nightmare if you're lactose intolerant? That's Shavuot. What about the one that's a nightmare if you're a vegetarian? That's like all the rest of them. Wait, is Hanukkah the one with the candles and the presents and the Maccabees? That's the one. Yes, that's it. I knew it. That's my favorite one. Anyway, nice seeing you, Becca. Good to see you, Sim. Uh, Simi? Yeah, Becca? What are you doing in our yard? About those Hanukkah candles. We say, Asur lanu lishtamesh bahem ele lirotam bilvad. We are forbidden to make use of them. We are only allowed to gaze upon them with awe. So we're not allowed to use those candles for our needs and our purposes, to have them serve us in some way. We are only allowed to appreciate them. And I wonder what would it mean for us to take this treatment of Hanukkah candles and apply it to human beings in our daily lives? What would it mean for us on a daily basis not to say, how can this person be useful to me? How can they serve my needs? But how can I better appreciate the uniqueness and individuality of each one of them, of who they are? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Who or 
נחלה, עוד יזרח עוד קטן שלי, שלי עוד יזרח עליי, עוד קטן שלי, עוד קטן עוד יזרח עליי, לנישן, 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 Hello, Camp Rama friends, wishing everybody a luminous Hanukkah full of joy and miracles. The Hasidic master, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev, said that great big historical miracles, like leaving Egypt or defeating the Greeks, or a little flask of oil lasting for eight days, those great big gigantic mind-blowing things are there to open up our eyes to all the small miracles that are around us every single day. I hope as you celebrate this Hanukkah, you not only think about those ancient miracles that happened to ancient people, but you become aware of how wonderful and miraculous all of every single day of your life is. Chag Sameach. Someone once asked Lubavitch Rebbe, what is the purpose of a Jew? And he said it's to be a lamplighter. A lamplighter was someone who went from lamppost to lamppost and lit up the streets in the darkness. Our job is to go from person to person and kindle the light of hope and inspiration in everyone that we meet. As we light our Hanukkiyot this year and make each night brighter and brighter in the darkness, 
Let's remember that our job is to be a lamplighter. Chag Sameach. The book of Maccabees indicates that the eight days of Hanukkah were in effect a replacement for the eight days of Sukkot and Shemini Atzeret, which had been missed that year. The bonus, of course, is that the holiday on which King Solomon dedicated the original Beit HaMikdash, the temple in Jerusalem, was the holiday of Sukkot, now being celebrated on Hanukkah for the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem. To me, this is a reminder of the resilience the flexibility our people have always shown in the face of existential challenges. It is a reassurance to me that our shifts that we have had to take during COVID are truly a Jewish path for us to follow. I wish you Chag Hanukkah Sameach. Ladies and gentlemen, our host, Rabbi Ethan Linden. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ethan Linden, and welcome to To Tell the Truth, the game where we have one real person and two imposters. Our guest today is no stranger to the Ramah Berkshires community. His voice blasts out from the radio on 102.3 Cole Ramah. He's an astronomy aficionado and a ham radio dynamo. Oh, baby, have mercy, it's Mitch Mernick. Number one, please state your name. My name is Mitch Mernick. Number two, please state your name. My name is Mitch Mernick. And number three. My name is Mitch Mernick. I'm really excited to have you all here. Are you ready to play To Tell the Truth? This portion of Lomar Ta'emet is brought to you by Mea Milim, Simonized Ivrit. With Hebrew so slick, it leaves a kick. Thank you very much and welcome back to To Tell the Truth. His name is Mitch Mernick and he's an expert on Hanukkah. I have in my hands excellent questions from our home audience about Hanukkah. Contestants, are you ready? All right, here we go. The first question comes from Karen in Kalamazoo. And her question is, what are the actual rules of dreidel? Number one. You'd spin the dreidel, and when it stops, you see which of the letters it lands on. Nun, gimel, he, or shin. Depending on the letter, then you know how much you won. All right, that seems pretty simple. Number three. 
Now, the rules of dreidel are very similar to the same rules of the game, but blades that the young people play. Now, when you win the game after knocking over the other person's dreidel, uh, you get Jewish guilt, uh, gelt, excuse me, and it's very delicious. Thank you very much. And number two. Well, I take issue with what number three said. It, it's not about knocking them over. You, those are street rules. You want to spin it the longest or the coolest. That That's has how you nothing win. to do with spinning it the longest. What? No, it's all about the letters. What? No, None I, 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 I spin my dreidel upside down. I spin my dreidel right round, baby. Right, right round. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the next question is, what is the best Hanukkah food? We're gonna start with you, number three. Oh, well, it has to be the potato latkes. Um, you put a little sour cream, some applesauce, Mwah, delicious, oh, it's amazing. It kind of reminds me of back when we'd eaten the Chadar Rachel. Uh, after Tish above, I don't really like the blintzes, so I stick with the latkes. Uh, you know, I love camp food, you know, don't tell AB, we're crazy about it. Uh, you know, it reminds me of that Moody Foodie show. Okay, thank you for that remarkably succinct answer. And now we're gonna go over to number one. The Sufkani Yot, jelly donuts with sugar on top and dough with oil and a delicious filling with jam that just oozes out, gets a little messy. Those are the most delicious food in Kanaka, Sufkani Yot. All right, and number two. What, I gotta give it to the chocolate gelt. It's dark chocolate come in silver, but the milk chocolate, now that's the gold. And uh, you gotta know, it's the best Hanukkah food. And that's not even an entree right. or an appetizer. If it's not the best, then why is it's it the, the prize for dreidel? The Sufkani Yot is the it's best the, because the no, jelly is so like the jelly. Oh, and try to see the sweet absurdity. Do Absolutely. not make ah. me deploy my mute button. Mitch? 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 What is there an echo in here? All right, our last question today comes from Little Yentl in Yonkers. And she would like to know, what is the true essence of Hanukkah? Number two, we're starting with you. Well, the thing about Hanukkah is it's plain old fun, and what's more fun than the game of dreidel? I, you know, you, I, it's not a, it's not about the awards, but you're looking at the Intercollegiate Broadcasting Systems champion. Okay, number three. Now, unlike Mitch over two over there, who always talks about his IBS, it's, uh, it's really about the miracle of Hanukkah. I'm a ham radio guy. I'm not a pyrotechnic. We're lighting these candles. It's very dangerous. I have to put tinfoil down so that we survive this every year is the true meaning of Hanukkah. All right, and number one. The essence of Hanukkah is to teach us that if there's a cause worth fighting for, and it's a just cause, and a right cause, and you have faith in God, then you can accomplish anything, even a miracle. All right, that is the end of our questions, and now you know what time it is. Everybody at home can vote on who is the real. Mitch Mernick will be right back on To Tell the Truth. Lomar et Aimet is brought to you by Camp Ramah in the Berkshires. All right, the moment you have all been waiting for. Will the real Mitch Murnick please stand up? All right, ladies and gentlemen, the real Mitch Murnick. All right, Mitch, thanks. Have a seat. And uh, number two, tell us, what's your real name and who are you really? My name is Jacob Sandler. My friends call me Milk, and uh, I am longtime song leader at Camper Mountain, the Berkshires, and a JTS Cantorial student. All right, and number three, who are you really? I'm Sammy Sandler uh, from Geshare 13, and now works in sales. Well, thank you very, very much, all of you, for being here, and thank you to our audience at home, as always. Next week, don't forget to join us as a very special guest, Juder Mer. Kabi is with us, and we're excited that he's going to be here. Thank you so much, and remember always to tell, tell the truth. truth. Hanukkah is not in the Torah. It's in this book, and in this book. It's even in this book, and this one. But Hanukkah is not in the Torah. That's okay. 
Our tradition makes a ton of space for the Jewish story to grow and evolve and shift. But Hanukkah is nowhere in this book. And you might know that if you brushed up on your Torah. Folks today in society go for rabbinic commentary. So to win their hearts, one must quote with ease. Hillel Rambam Yehuda Nasi. Kiva Rav Nachman Shimon Bar Yochai. Schneerson Heschel Yohanan Ben Zakai. Unless you know Rashi and the great Rav Cook, there are those who would call you a schnur. But the prophet you must know. Cause his book gets much ado. With the 613 meets book, we call him Moshe Rabbeinu. Brush up your Torah, start quoting it now. Brush up your Torah, and the women you will wow. If you chant a few lines from Bereshit, they will think you are charmingly offbeat. If you quote anecdotes from Devarim, there's no need to say Kenarim. If Shmod is your favorite, then say it. Mount Sinai, the plagues, and the sea split. Brush up your Torah, and they'll all kowtow. Brush up your Torah. Start quoting it now. Brush up your Torah. And the people you allow. Perhaps you should try Bamidbar. Twelve tribes in the desert, they went far. And to learn how to call Tikva. Don't forget Vayikra. Torah Nevim Ketuvim. Tanakh to those who Yodim. Brush. Up your Torah, and they'll all count Brush up your Torah, start quoting it now. Brush up your Torah, and the people you will wow. Fifty-four portions of Ktavstam. The words are all penned with the sweet tongue. Bereshit all the way to Israel. These stories might sound like a tall tale. It resides in the Aron HaKodesh. But deep in our levits are Shoresh. Brush, Brush up your, your Torah, Torah and they'll all count I read the whole Torah. And they'll all count But I read half of it. And they'll all After the creation of the world, during the first winter, Adam recognized a natural phenomenon that he had never known before. During some times of the year, there's more light, and during some parts of the year, it's darker. When he finally realized this truth, he established an eight-day festival celebrating the natural balance between light and darkness. Hanukkah is our yearly reminder as we light our Hanukkiyot each night, that sometimes we have light and sometimes there is darkness, but never is it just one or the other. In the light of our Hanukkiyot and in their dim shadow once they are extinguished, we can celebrate the proper functioning of the world and the balance between light and darkness. Chag Hanukkah Sameach may it be filled with light and love. Twas the night before Hanukkah, boychicks and maidens, not a sound could be heard, not even the dreidels. The menorah was set in the window alight. In the kitchen, my booby was grabbing a bite. Salami, pastrami, a glaze of latte, lots of kosher dill pickles and bagels, oy vey. Gesund and geschmack, the kinderlock felt while dreaming of Game Boys and Hanukkah guilt. My alarm clock was sitting 
a clombin' and tickin'. While Booby was carvin' a stickle of chicken. When a tumble arose, like a thousand baruchas, Santa had fallen and broken his... tuchas. I put on my slippers, I'm survey dry. While Booby was eating her herring on rye, I grabbed for my bathrobe and buttoned my gawkas. While Booby was just then devouring the lockas, I ran to the window, and to my surprise, a little red yarmulke greeted my eyes. When he got to the door and he saw our menorah, Yiddish kinder, he said, kinahora. I thought for a minute I was in a strange hoist. As long as I'm here, I'll leave a few toys. He went into the kitchen and picked up a dish, a gopal, a messer, a shtickle of fish. With smacks of delight, he started his fressin, chopped liver, kanedlach, and kreplach a guessin. Along with his meal, he had a few schnapps. When it came to eating, this boy chick was tops. He asked for some knishes with pepper and salt, but they were so hot that he yelled, Doi gewalt! He buttoned his hoisin as he ran from the tish. Your kosher meal was simply delish. As he went to the door, he said, see you later. I'll be back on Pesach in time for the Seder. Then more rapid than eagles, his prancers they came as he whistled and shouted and called out by name. Now Izzy, now Morris, now Louie and Sammy, on Irving, on Maxie, on Jaime and Manny. Then he gave a geshrai as he drove out of sight. A good yontif to all and to all. A good night. An early Zionist Hanukkah song asks, Miyamalel Gvurot Yisrael, who can retell the mighty acts of Israel. It's riffing off the much older selection from the book of Tilim, from the book of Psalms, which asks a different question. Who can retell the mighty acts of God? The first song has as its hero a Maccabee, not divine might. It's a call to see ourselves as the ones who can save the Jewish people. One night of Hanukkah, sing that first song and ask yourself, what is a mighty act that I can do right now for the Jewish people? How can I be a Maccabee? And then ask yourself, when do I feel God's spirit and how can it help me understand my mission and give me the strength to do what I need to do? We all know we have the one extra candle to light the others, but why do we have that candle? It is because the other eight candles can't be used for anything but telling everyone how amazing it is that in the darkness, in the brokenness of the darkest part of the year, we can still find light. Miracles are still possible. Persuminisa. Nisa. 
Seems that every year for Hanukkah, I get a new adult coloring book. Every year. The worst Hanukkah gift I ever got was a potato. My brother sent me one of those potatoes that you send in the mail, and that was my gift. The worst Hanukkah present I got from my parents was an empty photo album. I don't think I ever used it because we have phones now, and I think I had them sell it at a garage sale. My worst Hanukkah present ever was a really ugly scarf that I got as part of a secret Maccabee gift exchange. The worst Hanukkah present I ever got was this sock. It looks like it would be a nice present being that it's very on brand, but it was just one sock, not two. So I've worn it before, but I definitely looked silly while wearing it. This guy, Baby Yoda. One year for Hanukkah, I got socks. They were Passover themed. The worst Hanukkah gift I ever got was a box of mechanical pencils. I got this t-shirt and then I got it again the next year and the next year and the next year. So I have four of these shirts. The worst Hanukkah gift I ever got was a Cabbage Patch Kid with a pacifier in his mouth, which was bought just to make fun of me. Worst Hanukkah gift ever, Batman underoos. Underoos. Underwear that's fun to wear when you're three. Not when you're 10. The worst Hanukkah gift I ever got was a coffee table book about Eastern Europe's great rabbis. Wait, I got you that. The word Hanukkah means dedication and refers to the rededication of the second temple after it was destroyed by the Syrian Greeks. But this holiday also gives us the opportunity to consider what we might want to rededicate ourselves to in the coming weeks. What are those sacred values and commitments that might bring some warmth and some light and miraculous sense of optimism and hope to the world? Let us dedicate ourselves to those this holiday. I don't understand it. Happy Hanukkah, they said. Happy Hanukkah? It's Hanukkah. Oh, Svi, Svi, I left my wallet. Go get it. No, go get it. It's at the cash. Thank you. I don't understand. I always raise Svi and Blima to know that there's a ch in life, you know, a ch. Where would we be without the ch? I mean, we're Jews. Where would we be without the ch as Jews? What would mishpacha be? It's all in the mishpacha. Mishpacha without the ch is like mispasha from Cartier, the watch. Mispasha? That's not good. What kind of chazarai is happy Hanukkah? As a people, we need the ch. I don't care if you spit a lot. It takes a lot of spit to be a Jew. Oy, I feel chalishes. Chalishes! You know, like the after effects, the heartburn you get after eating too much Ben and Jerry's, the chazerai. Don't take my ch away. It's fakakta. Fakakta. I need my fakakta, my seichel, my tchachchiz, my shvach, my tuchas. I've got a great tuchas. You could have it. You want to take my tuchas away from me? It would actually be a machaya. Chazarai, Chazarai! Oh, look, there's Svi with my wallet. What a great kid. Look at him. I'll open the door for you. Just a second. Thank you, honey. Hey, Mom. Huh? Did you say something to the cashier? What? Me? Why would I say anything to her? So I say happy Hanukkah. Oh. Merry Christmas, would you? And happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah Sameach. One of the great questions of Hanukkah is how to light the Hanukkah. In fact, the ancient rabbis, the ancient sages, debated this very question. Beit Shammai ruled that we begin Hanukkah lighting eight candles and decreasing one candle per night. Beit Hillel ruled that we begin Hanukkah lighting one candle and adding a candle each night. Both of these positions hold different values and meaning for us. Ultimately, we light the Hanukkah in accordance with Beit Hillel, beginning with one candle and ending with eight candles on the final night. We celebrate Hanukkah during the darkest time of the year. The days are short and the nights are long. 
As we go into the evening each night of Hanukkah, we add a little bit of extra light into that night. Hanukkah reminds us each of our potential to bring light to darkness. Time to light the menorah. I'm hungry. Can you me pause my game? Stop it. For this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, I was doing it wrong. <laughs> You're so bad. What are you doing? Hey, 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 whoa, 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 break it up. Hey, hey. Again? Everybody go to your places, you know what's gonna happen. First we're gonna gather evidence and then I am going to appropriately mete out the punishment. Put those down. All right, evidence phase, go. You're not being And then what happened? Enjoy the candles, Rob. Oh, right, and then what happened? Okay, and then what happened? And then what'd you do? And then what'd you say? Well, what did you say? Did you stop anybody? Did you do anything? I know exactly what happened and I think I've figured it out and I know what the appropriate punishment is. You, you're gonna go to camp, you're going to rake every leaf and then sweep every walkway in the entire place. You better get going. I can't drive. I don't know what your problem is. Ride a bike. I can't do that either. Well, you better start walking then. You, you have a very simple punishment but it's gonna take some time so you better get started. You're gonna transcribe the entire Encyclopedia Britannica starting with the letter B and I just wanna remind you we don't currently have the Encyclopedia Britannica. I don't know why you're laughing because your punishment is you're gonna clean every single bathroom on this entire street no! with dental floss. Yeah, it just seems like the most appropriate punishment. I can't I think there's any reason, reason why you should be arguing with me. There's absolutely no reason why I think you should back up. And I don't really... What is going on? And what are you wearing, Ethan? Just parenting. You guys better figure this out or there will be no latkes. <gasps> and light those candles. We should probably light the candles. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right, let me have your shamus again. Ooh. All right, ready? Hanukkah is a celebration of the Jewish spirit and the sense of resilience. Just as we light one candle each night going from one to eight, we know that even in these dark days of winter and these dark days of our country and our world with a global pandemic, things will get better, the sun will shine again, and there will be lights that we can all see and celebrate. Chag Sameach.
goes my vine. Happy Hanukkah! Alle Nacht mit Freude lachen, spielen alle Kinder lachen, ich finde Kinder sind dumm, jetzt alle lachen, lachen. 